Hello everybody, thank you for joining me. This is Game God Fluent bringing you potentially a new LP. As of right now, we're going to do this one video and depending on how many people watch and if you tell me you want to see an LP of this game, I will do it. The game in question is a roguelike called Sheeran the Wanderer, the Tower of Fortune and the Dice of Fate. So about this game, um, apparently it is very close to the original Rogue, which is the first roguelike game. Um, and it's turn-based, and it's very cool. So if you want to see an LP, let me know, and let's get into what would be episode one. Uh, note, I don't know if I'm going to continue this. It depends how many people let me know. So let's go ahead and launch the game. I'm going to go ahead and light up a cigarette, see what we got here. Spike Chunsoft. It's a little loud. Reva, the god of destiny, king of the eight bestial gods, has three eyes. It is said that one sees the past, one sees the future, and one sees the present. And the three dice that Reva casts... They decide the birth and death of all humankind. When a die of fate is cast, the result can bequeath prosperity or grave misfortune. Even a life in dire straits can be completely turned around. The legends claim that Riva dwells in a wondrous stronghold. They call this Palace of Paradise. The Tower of Fortune. Very cool lore, right? Sharon the Wanderer, the Tower of Fortune, and the Dice of Fate. Let's get into it. Alright, so we're going to go with the New Wanderer's Diary in English. Um, other game options, common settings. Let's check it out. Background music, sound effects. Beautiful music, base color. I'll go blue, text size small, screen display method, clear, skip message, no. Sure, change settings. Uh, dungeon settings, walk, normal, auto turn, I guess, turn around, situational, confirm direction, no. Directional keys, enemy attack, no. All right, that looks good. Map size medium, map position left, transparency, tile display, um, message display, status display, uh, we'll do modern, live display, I don't know what that is, alright, um, create a diary, and we're going to create our character, uh, we're going to go with The adventurer who we've seen before. Maybe not. Matthew. Matthew, are you sure? Yes. At the magic castle of the desert, we prevented the rebirth of a demonic god. We then searched for our next adventure. My partner is the Wanderer, Matthew. He travels the world in search of mysteries of all kinds. And I'm the storytelling ferret, Copa. One day, I was lost somewhere in the, in the mountains far from civilization. I stumbled across a small village. It was there I would meet the youngster that would cause us to challenge the god of destiny, Riva. I'll use a more enthusiastic voice for Copa. So this is a roguelike, but it is much like the original rogue. Alright, let's talk to people. Whoa, it's a guy in a weird outfit walking a fox. Hey, Squirt, ignoring the crack about my partner's outfit, I'm not a fox, I'm a ferret. Whoa, this fox, I mean, f ferret, it talks. Huh. Animals, birds, and fish can all communicate in their own languages. You humans just don't understand them. 
Wow, is that so? I didn't realize that. I guess I just got schooled by a ferret. Hmm. Uh, you? Oh my, what are you people doing in the middle of the mountains here? Have you gotten lost? It's been so long since I've seen an unfamiliar face. This place is called Inori Village. You're welcome to make yourselves at home and take it easy while you're here. Hey, you there. I'm the traveling fortune teller, Madame Mateska. This is just part of my disguise. Don't concern yourself with it too much. Some people have predestined fates. Others do not. All events are either coincidences or inevit inevitabilities. If Riva does not cast the die, someone else will. And who knows what the results may be. By the way, your fortune says that you have trouble with women. Be careful. So you can already tell the lore is like very philosophical and cool. Oh, you're wandering the world looking for mysterious things. Good for you, I guess. Aha, uh -huh, you must be here to research that legend our village has passed down since ancient times. What? You've never heard of the legend? Well, I shouldn't be the one to tell you. It's a secret legend after all. <laughs> Oyo and Jirokichi have been very close since they were small. Those two really make a good couple. The god of destiny is so cruel. Why would he try to separate a couple like that? What did they do to deserve this? Oyo and Kirochiki? Oyo has been sick in bed for a while now. I hope she gets better so she can teach me how to play Cat's Cradle. Do they say another thing? No. Alright, so it's one, one thing. Alright, here we have a house. Go ahead and check it out. My name is Court Koji Koji Ruda. Koji Ruda. But you can call me Koji Ruda the Great. I'll tell you one thing. People have a sort of defined role that they must play. Tadpoles become frogs, calves become cows, dragonfly nymphs become dragonflies. No matter where they go and what they do, they are born into these roles and they cannot escape them. You farmers or wanderers should just keep yourselves in the corner of the world and live out your lives. Do you see what I mean? I'll offer to make you my servants. This is a once in a lifetime chance to change your role. No way. What? You don't want to be my servants? Huh, you're such fools. I have no time for you. Do as you wish. I'm the wealthiest person in this village. Although this is a small village with very little, I'm still the best. Let me tell you one thing, there are two types of people in this world, people born with luck and people born without it. Even if you have bad luck and nothing ever goes your way, you shouldn't ever give up. People with bad luck can work hard until a bit of luck that they can use comes their way. Maybe. Hmm. Alright, so nothing I can really pilfer or steal, it seems. Not that I'm really looking to do that, but kind of am here alright so that was the rich man's house and here we have just a house let's come in and talk to the people kids these days give up so easily I say men should be more aggressive more wanton with their desires with my catnip juice you'll be energized invigorated hustled and bustled and you have dynamite motivation Unfortunately, I'm out right now, but if you really want it, I suppose I can make some more for you. Hee <laughs> hee! Alright, she doesn't actually give me any, I guess. If you get hungry, you eat onigiri. That's common sense. You need food to survive. Everyone knows that. If your fullness drops to zero, your health will begin depleting, and you'll eventually collapse from starvation. If you don't have onigiri, you can eat grass to survive. Huh. Okay. So we have to eat. Talk to all of you. Let's go in this house. Supposedly, climbing the Tower of Fortune and meeting Riva, the God of Destiny, will change your fate. What do you think? Will my retirement life be rosy with Riva's power? By the way, is your life rose-colored? What? You're satisfied with your fate? Sure am. This village has an old legend. Beyond the cave at the village edge is a mysterious world where hermits live. It's a mystical place. I'd like to see it with my own eyes, but those who go there vanish, never to return. 
Have you heard that the tower in the land of hermits can change your destiny? It's the god Reva's Tower of Fortune. It's just a fairy tale the old people tell here. It's not true. They're mixing up their old tales in actual history. Even if that tower really does exist, the tales also said that it's a deadly tower full of monsters. No human would be able to go in there and come back alive. It's best if you just ignore these stories. Well, that's essentially where we're heading. Can I pick this bag up? No. Oya said she'd marry me when I get older. I won't lose to Jirokichi. Beginner house. Listen to me, traveler. Our lives are governed by the god of destiny, Riva. Meetings and partings, happiness and disaster, the strings of fate that tie the world are all controlled by Riva. <coughs> Excuse me. Riva is also the presiding deity of the eight bestial gods. Pray to him and give thanks. Do it now. Okay, I do have a backpack. You don't have anything. Our strength is 8 out of 8. No XP. Fullness is 100 out of 100. Next level, 10. Other. We have a message log, which we can read through. Options. Hints. We'll uh, get to that in a minute. Suspend is save. This is the beginner house. Let's check it out. Arrows, rocks, talismans, and staves can be set, and you'll be able to use them with Q. It's actually Z, but... Arrows, rocks, talismans, and staves. It's a breeze to set up. Oh, maybe it is Q, because he's talking about a different item than your sword or whatever. It's a breeze to set up. Select an item you want it set from your backpack, then pick set, and you're done. There are other convenient shortcuts. Go to other and check the hint section to see the shortcut controls. Hey, I've studied a lot about items. Is there anything you want to know about? Um, items with an X. Items with an X in their name are sealed, like herb. Sealed items can't be used, and even if you have them upgraded, their abilities and upgrade values are nullified. Arrows and rocks can never be sealed, so that's one less thing to worry about. Even if sealed, an exorcism scroll and exorcism pot can be used to return items to normal. Anything else you want to know? Items with that. Items with the katana, which... Items like the katana, which have a skull, are cursed items. Once you equip them, they can't be unequipped, so be careful. Keep in mind that only weapons, shield, and bracelets will get cursed. If you equip them by mistake, you'll have to get an exercise or step on a strip trap to remove them. Items with a bell. Items like herb that have a bell are blessed items. Blessed items will heal more or may deal extra damage. It's always going to be something beneficial to you. There is also Revival Grass Scrolls and Undo Grass where the effects don't change. Scrolls aren't one-use items. Revival Grass and Undo Grass won't turn into weeds from one use. Pots, bracelets, and licenses that are blessed can protect against negative effects like being sealed. Huh. Items with a question mark? Items like Tin Blade that have a question mark are items that may be cursed, blessed, or sealed. You won't know until you actually use them or equip them. You can use an Identify Scroll or Identify Pot to identify them. But if you're gutsy, throw caution to the wind and just use it. Um, items with a yellow name. Items like Tin Blade that have yellow text in their names have some unknown values. For example, stabs that are yellow have an unknown number of charges left. Weapons and shields will be identified as soon as you equip them, but stabs won't be identified even if they're used. Huh, with an unknown name? Items like Glass Bracelet are items that you know nothing about other than their type. You'll have to use Identify Scroll or Identify Pot to identify them and decide to equip them. But it's not like you'll always have them, so I say you should go for it and equip them to find out. Okay. Okay, you can come talk to me if you need to know about anything else. Legend says that placing an offering here and praying will grant any wish. That's why I'm praying as hard as I can right now. Please heal o Oyu. Get rid of her sickness. Alright, and then we have the beginner house. This place is the training facility, and it's where the first-timers go to train before going into dungeons. Oh, Matthew, this is your first time here. Hello. I'll be your guide. Nice to meet you. You can't bring in your items or gitan, so I'll hold on to them for you. That way, if you collapse, they'll be safe with me. Oh, also, the items you pick up can be used freely here, but you won't be allowed to take them outside. And when you clear the training area for the first time, I'll give you a reward. Now you have to train. So what do you want to train today? Um... F 
finding the stairs. Finding the stairs is what you want to practice? Then I'll just hold on to your things right now. Go, go, go. Let's go. Hmm. So we're going to do a little training at the training facility before we head in. Once you enter a dungeon, look for the stairs. That's your exit. If you find monsters along the way, press Z button to attack. You and the monsters both take one turn at a time. If you don't move, the monsters also won't move, so you can stay calm and plot out your actions. Matthew did four damage to Mammal, did two damage to me. Mammal collapsed, gained two XP. If there's a monster out of range, press the Z button to swing. This will make it move a tile closer. Cool. Found the stairs. You can go to the next floor from the stairs. You can't backtrack floors, so make sure you're ready to leave. Um, advance. Hmm, interesting. Wow, congrats! You passed with flying colors. I'll return your belongings. This is your first time clearing training, so I have a little reward for you. Here you go. Got oil scroll. What do you say? Want to continue? Yes. Um, moving diagonally. Moving dag. Okay. All right. So this is the whole thing, moving diagonally. Did you know you can move diagonally? Hold the W button while moving to move diagonally automatically. Okay, so you can go one at a time. I see. At the corner of water terrain, you can move diagonally to get through it. Remember this technique. Okay, you can punch diagonally too. Cool. Moving horizontally and vertically to the stairs will take four turns, but move diagonally and you'll be there in two. Try to evade monsters and get to the stairs without being attacked once. When avoiding monsters, try diagonal movement to use as few turns as possible. What are details? Use these to proceed to the next floor. Oh, advance. We'll do all the training, I guess, in this episode. So we won't probably actually get to the... Which is a reward for me, dragon grass. So we won't get to the dungeon, probably. Effective dashing. Gotta know this stuff before heading in. Hold the A button while moving to make you run until you hit something. Try dashing upward. Oh, and a gear is picked up. Whether you dash or walk, it costs one turn to move one grid space. Your hunger rate is also the same. While you are dashing, the monsters will also move at the same speed towards you. Dash to the left to race with the monsters for a better illustration. Got it. Don't panic and dash when you're in danger. Always think before you act. Interesting. So there's all these little intricate details that make it really fascinating. Ordinary stick. Um, turning in place. Hmm. These are all the moves we're going to use. Hold the X button and press... Hold the X button and press the directional key to change the direction you are facing. Turning in place won't use up any turns, so you don't have to worry. Cool. If enemies are adjacent, press the X button to face the enemy automatically. It's a nice feature, so use it often. By the way, when you step on stairs, you'll be asked if you want to proceed. This is also under feet in the menu. Even if you don't select advance, you won't have to go back the way you came to stay on the same floor. I don't understand that, but okay. Let's get another... Sweet item. Confusion scroll. Um, dealing with hunger. Hunger.
longer is a thing in the game, apparently. As you spend turns in the dungeon, you'll get more and more hungry and your fullness will deplete. To see how hungry you are, press the S button and check your fullness in the bottom window. Fullness, two out of zero. Matthew's hunger is causing him to get dizzy. Oni Giri was picked up. If your fullness reaches zero, you'll lose HP with each action. Eat Onigiri to replenish your fullness. Replenish a little bit of fullness. And the bar's at the top, FG. But of course, we're full in the real game. That's just practice. Training, I should say. Slow staff, five charges. I'm um, using the map. Let's check this out. So this is a very deep and detailed game, much like the original Rogue. The room is wide and you can't line yourself up with the entrance to the passageway. Don't fret. Press the space button to view the map. You'll see a purple grid that juts into the room. That's the passageway entrance. Okay. Oops. I didn't mean to do that. Ordinary stick was picked up. Rooms and passageways you pass through will be filled in on the map automatically. You'll be able to see the position of items or stairs easily. Open the menu with the S button and select Scout. Press the directional keys to see the room. You can see items or monsters in the room that are far away. Oh, that's pretty useful. Interesting. Did you know there's a message log? Hold the A button while pressing the X button to view messages displayed in the past. You can see what happened in the previous turns this way. Oh, okay. Neat. I can't wait to get into this, man. This is going to be sweet. For it, we got a preservation pot with five charges. Hopefully we get an identify pot. All right, six more. Walk around to heal. Seems pretty self-explanatory, but I know nothing about it. I've never played this game. If you take damage, your HP will regenerate on its own as you keep walking. So you don't have to panic even if you don't have any healing items. Alright, we're back to 15. Oh. Oh. If you want to heal your HP without walking, press A and Z button simultaneously. Turns will continue to pass just as they do when you move, so keep an eye on those pesky monsters. A and Z? Okay. Cool. Fortunately for Wanderers, a monster's HP doesn't regenerate on its own. If a monster has the upper hand, you can always run and heal and strike once the situation has turned favorable. I don't... Uh, you can run and heal, yeah, I guess. Makes sense. Almost done. Transient staff with five charges. And these are like secondary items, I think. Equipment is your friend. Even these trainings are pretty fun. They're simple, but they're fun. Equipping weapons and shields will raise your attack and defense respectively. First, try to defeat a monster without equipping anything.
Once you obtain a shield, you won't enjoy its benefits unless you equip it. Go to Backpack in the menu and select Equip for Shields. Once you obtain a weapon... Okay, go to Backpack and select Equip for Weapons. Backpack. Equip. Equipped Iron Targe. Ooh, and it shows. Tim Blade. Cool. Bracelets are like weapons and shields in the sense that you have to equip them in order to benefit. They usually have special effects, so find one that fills the right void to make your adventuring easier. To equip bracelets, go to the menu and select the one to equip from your backpack and hit equip. Alert bracelet. Wearing this prevents you from being afflicted with a sleep status. A sleep status renders you unable to do anything. It's alert bracelet. Stepped on sleep trap, the bracelet kept you awake. Cool. Yeah, tons, tons of details here. Really awesome. Ooh, strength bracelet. Projectiles and range. This seems interesting. You can use arrows or rocks to attack monsters from a distance. I'll explain arrows first. 20 wood arrows. Arrows fly straight and true in the direction you're facing. Face the monster, then select wood arrow from your backpack menu and select shoot. Projectiles can be set and be used simply by pressing the Q button. To set an arrow type, go to your backpack menu and select set for the item of your choice. Yeah, we got it. There we go. 20 rocks. Rocks will fly in a parabola, in a parabola in the direction you're facing. They don't fly as far as arrows, but you can lob them over walls or allies to hit monsters. Face the monster, then select rock from your backpack menu, then pick throw to throw it. course you can set them. If you find yourself facing a powerful enemy, weaken it with rocks before engaging it directly. Cool. Hmm. Do we get some rocks? Power up grass. So yeah, guys, let me know if you want to see me do this dungeon, which is an enormous dungeon, apparently. Use grass or throw it. Uh, we'll have a lot of fun with this game, if you guys want to see it. Just leave a comment. Let me explain the most basic way to use grass. Step on big explosion trap, wow. Herb was picked up, oh. Otogiriso, and heal grass. Herb, Otogiriso, and heal grass can be used to heal your HP. To use them, go to the backpack in the menu and pick the grass you want to use with use. When you're about to collapse, it's better to use items to heal rather than waiting for your HP to regenerate. Using this will heal some HP. If you use it when your HP is full, your max HP will increase a bit. It'll also replenish your fullness a bit. Using this will heal your HP. If you use it when your HP is full, your max HP will increase a bit. It will also replenish your fullness a bit and additionally will cure confused status. Using this will greatly heal HP. If you use it when your HP is full, your max HP will increase a bit. It will replenish a bit of your fullness, can cure confused, blind, and undoed speed reduction and other similar effects. Heal grass was eaten. Use dragon grass to breathe fire in the direction you're facing. This will insta-kill most monsters. Dragon grass was picked up. Wow. Use sleep using sleepy grass will make you fall asleep, hence the name. For grass that inflicts negative effects like this, don't use it on yourself, throw it at the enemies. Uh, 
Nice. I love this game already. No matter what grass you use, it will always replenish your fullness a little. Excluding grass that's dangerous to use, you should always use extra grass you have rather than just throw it away. Love it already. Hope you guys are having fun and you're enjoying it too. Staunch bracelet. Well, we have a strength bracelet and a staunch bracelet. Only two more. Stabs and magic bullets. And then we'll wrap this episode up, I guess. Stabs can be waved to shoot magic bullets. Take that paralysis staff and wave it at a monster. To wave a staff, go to your backpack, select the staff, and then hit wave. Hitting a target... <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. Hitting a target with a magic bullet from a paralysis staff will cause it to become completely immobilized. However, if you attack it or use items on it, they'll start to move again, so keep that in mind. Instead of attacking it, you can always just leave it there and scamper away. Bye bye. You can only wave a staff a set number of times, but stabs with zero uses left can be thrown to cause the same effect. Try taking that transient staff and throwing it at the monster on the left. CD warped. Huh. Transient staff will warp the target above the stairs and then immobilize them. You'll have to deal with them somehow before you can progress to the next floor, so be mindful of that. <clears throat> Could have dragon grassed them, but oh well. Pretty cool. Antidote grass, nice. Cure poison. Last one. Effective scroll usage. Should be interesting. Scrolls are used by reading them. Take that vacuum slash scroll over there and read it. It will deal damage to all monsters in the room. Select backpack in the menu and choose read on a scroll of your choice. Vacuum slash was picked up. Nice. Reach level two. A fear scroll can be read to inflict a frayed status on all monsters adjacent to you. Try using it if you're getting surrounded. Oh, a summon trap. Yikes. Are they following me? Oh dear. Reading a slumber scroll will put all monsters in the room to sleep. However, after a few turns, they'll all wake up and be powered up, so be careful. You can try to defeat them in their sleep, but if you can't, it's better to get out of there. <clears throat> Alright, how do I use that? Okay, down here. Sweet. Sleep them and run. If there's too many. Alright. Another ordinary stick. You've leveled up quite a lot, so I'll unlock some more kinds of training. Oh boy. What do you say? Want to continue? Sure. Oh dear. Okay, how long have we been playing? 34 minutes. Let's do one more page. Corners are your friends. Well, we have to train. We're beginner. And this is like Rogue, which if you don't learn the game inside and out, you're in trouble. Unlike water terrain, you can't skirt past wall corners by moving diagonally. All right. You can't attack through the corner of the wall. Go ahead and try. However,
However, arrows or stabs that shoot bullets can attack beyond a corner of a wall. Try shooting an arrow from there. Well, first I have to aim the direction. Oops. Oops. Mm hmm. Okay. Got it. This also means that monsters, arrows, and magic bullets can also reach you. We're gonna have more items than we know what to do with. Con another confusion scroll. Uh, passageway duels. This sounds fun. When fighting two or more monsters, your basic strategy should be run into a passageway. In a passageway, you can fight the monsters one at a time, meaning you'll only get attacked once per turn. Oh. Ouch, that was... bad. up but it doesn't it's not a real level up of course plain targe we've got our sword and shield items and pots this sounds fun give me the loot give me the loot you can put items inside a preservation pot for storage Normally, you can only carry 24 items, but multiple items in a pot are only considered as one item. If you keep your items in the pot, you can walk around with 24 more items than usual. I don't get it. Okay, so... Insert... Oh, so if... These are all the same type. It only acts as... Onigiri couldn't fit. I thought it only acts as one. Hmm. It fits 24. The food outside of a pot rotted. If you keep your Onigiri inside a pot, you don't have to worry about them rotting. You should carry your Onigiri inside a preservation pot whenever possible. Heal pot is an item you open to use. Open it to recover all your HP. But every time you open it, the number of uses that it has left will decrease. Use it wisely. HP was already full. Oh. Cool. Keep your onigiri inside a preservation pot. Wow, this game is going to be so wild. Fear scroll. It's extremely deep, which you're seeing. Tide turning talismans. And if we get into this one, man, we're going to have a lot of fun together. Holla at me. Talismans are items you, you use by throwing throwing them, just like grass or depleted stabs. Talismans affect the monster that was hit and the monsters that are next to it. One talisman can turn the tide against a throng of monsters. Ten sleep talisman was picked up. Oh, wait, I should... I see. Oh, dear. There we go. Hm. Oh well. Oh dear. Get out of there. <laughs> Run. I could have just turned around and punched them, but... And we get... 
Another ordinary stick. I don't know if we can sell them or what. Alright, we're almost done with this page. Poison reduces strength. Some traps or monster abilities will poison you and reduce your strength. When your strength decreases, the damage you deal will also decrease. Beware of poison. Took four damages. Poison, strength decreased by one. You can check your current strength on the bottom window of the menu. Press the S button to open the menu to check it out. Six out of eight. Use antidote grass to fully restore your strength. You can use it right away or use it when your strength has been further decreased. Use strength grass. Using strength grass has added bonus of increasing the max value of your strength by one. However, when you use it when your strength isn't at max, it will only restore one strength. Try to use antidote grass to recover your strength first. Alright, makes sense. This strength bracelet has the effect of increasing your strength. While you have it equipped, you will gain three strength. Alright. Pretty simple. And after I finish this last one, we'll go ahead and wrap it up. And we get a cleansing bracelet. And then there's two more pages. Unidentified items. This is always fun in RPGs. I am already in love with this game, I think. When you see a generic name like Red Grass, it means that you don't know the real name of the item. We call these items unidentified. Unidentified grass can be identified when you use it. However, that grass has to be consumed. The next time you get the same item, you'll see its true name displayed. Oh, I should go ahead and use the golden grass. Golden grass is actually herb. Poison grass. Poison grass is picked up. There's a way to identify your unidentified items without using them. Read an identify scroll or put it inside an identify pot to figure out the unidentified item's name. Okay, identify pot. Let's insert chartreuse grass. Sadly, to extract items from inside an identify pot, you'll have to throw it. You'll have to throw it against the wall to break it open. Insert bluegrass. Insert layered grass. Insert ochre grass. Um, peak power up grass antidote stomach expander stomach shrinker throw. Ah. Oh. That's pretty nifty, so you can't reuse them. Hmm. So clever. This game is extremely clever already. Wow, congrats! You passed with flying colors. I return your belongings. Oh, we are, why am I reading that? Plating scroll. Come back to train anytime. Alright, I'm going to save here. Beautiful music. And next time, we'll continue exploring the training and uh, hopefully finish training maybe and get to the actual dungeons, which are plentiful and awesome. Yeah, I'm already in love with this game. So hopefully you guys want to see it and want to watch it more. Want to watch me LP it. Uh, let's play it. Let me know in the comments. Um, I may just go ahead and do an episode here or there, something like that. It's fun to just pick up and play a bit, because it's a roguelike, um, very old school. Uh, so yeah, let me know. Hope you guys enjoyed this at least, and yeah, uh, thanks for watching as always. Appreciate it. Much love, peace, and joy, and I'll see you in another video. So long. Just groove out to this music a bit. <laughs>